Hello everyone, Paresh Patel here with you again to share with you the interesting case that I had with a patient of mine for Inclusive Magazine. As you can see from the first slide here that we got a patient that walks in and he's broken tooth number seven pretty substantially down to the gum line. We got a few things going on with the other uh, central number eight and then maybe some things going on with number six and potentially number five. You know, the first thing that as a general practitioner that I always look for uh, when I'm treatment planning a anterior implant case is what aesthetic risk are we going to have here. And of course, with this patient with the retracted view, we don't know where his lip line is, but we can figure all that out as we go through this case here. Uh, the first thing that I decided to do was to go ahead and uh, make a referral to my endodontist here because I like working with our specialist to see what's going on with number seven and tooth number eight. Could we do some root canals, do some gingivectomies, uh, get some uh, posts and crown and help this patient out. However, after returning from the endodontist, he was offered a very guarded prognosis for root canal therapy being successful. The endodontist felt like he found vertical cracks on both number seven and number eight. Uh, we also talked about, well, maybe what do we do about a bridge? Could we do a bridge from uh, tooth number six over to maybe number nine? And uh, tooth number nine, unfortunately, is part of a bridge that goes from number nine to number 11. So to cut that bridge off and then make a long span bridge from tooth number six all the way over to tooth number 11 was really not what the patient was thrilled about doing. So then we said, well, what's the potential of doing a uh, implant for tooth number seven and tooth number eight? So let's look and see how this is going to turn out here as a choice for a general practitioner. In this uh, episode of uh, Inclusive Magazine, we're going to talk about the TRS or the tooth uh, replacement system where we can get all the parts and pieces as general dentists to start this case from the implant to the uh, healing abutment, which is customized for you and your patient, to the customized uh, biotemp, to the customized uh, impression post, and then the final uh, CAD CAM design and uh, custom abutment, and then the crown that goes over the top of that uh, uh, abutment and, and implant. The other things that struck out uh, to me when the patient uh, came in presenting with the tooth number seven fractured was the, uh, the asymmetry from the right and left sides. You know, on the right hand side, uh, we've got the gingiva kind of low and on his left hand side, we can see where the gingiva is pushed up into a more sort of a favorable aesthetic position. So if we're gonna be extracting these teeth and placing implants, we could mold that tissue with our custom healing caps and really get that tissue to become a little bit more symmetrical. So we have eight and nine looking the same and tooth number seven and 10 looking the same. So now one of the most important parts is uh, where is the patient's smile line? So we can see here when the patient's smiling, we have a very low lip line, which is very favorable for us as general practitioners to start this as one of our uh, anterior implant cases because we don't really have to worry about where this gingival margin is gonna be. Do we have perfect symmetry between eight and nine and seven and 10? So this is a pretty low aesthetic risk. Uh, we talked about the concept that maybe we would never get the gum to be exactly the same. My patient was very uh, amicable and uh, very, um, you know, uh, with the concept of that the aesthetics with his lip retracted wouldn't be the first concern that he just wanted to be able to, you know, walk around and have a full set of teeth and not worry about teeth that would break off or have to redo a large span bridge. From the uh, intro examination and the initial radiographs taken, I found there's plenty of bone and gingiva surrounding both of the non-restorable teeth. So we went ahead and made the treatment plan with the patient that we were gonna do the tooth replacement solution to provide a patient-specific CAD-CAM produced uh, set of restorations that would help to train the soft tissue during the healing phase and try to create as much of a natural emergence profile as possible and try to get this case to work out as aesthetic. Even though it's a pretty low aesthetic risk, we wanna always strive for perfection and get something that works out well for us in the end and our patient. So we take our preliminary impressions so we could send that off to the lab so we could start with the fabrication of the custom components we'd need on surgery day, the day of extraction, what are we gonna have to have? The lab started working to create those off of that model and fabricate us a prosthetic stent. So it's important to note that the difference exists between this prosthetic stent 
and a true surgical guide. This is where we uh, really just are saying where should the center point of our implants be if we were going to prosthetically want the nicest looking restorations over the top of that. So it's really up to the doctor to make sure that these implants have good bone to go into. This is the lab's sort of proposal of saying if we can stay within the confines of this um, prosthetic guide, we're going to have the best result for our patients in the end. Once the prosthetic guide is fabricated, the lab also gets to work on creating our custom healing abutments, our custom temporary abutments, and two biotemp provisionals along with custom impression copings for tooth number seven and number eight. And all of these components are precisely milled to have the same gingival margins and contours, so all the effort we go to to train this soft tissue can be transferred from one component to the next. After I received the custom components from the TRS uh, solution from the laboratory, the patients called in, the patients got numb, we uh, tried to do as atraumatic of a series of extractions for tooth number seven and tooth number eight as possible. And then we go ahead and use our prosthetic guide, place it over the remaining teeth, and use that as a starting point for our central uh, pilot drill to go through and line up our implants. The implants are placed, and then that way we can visualize the end result while we're doing the implant positioning and implant spacing once again between each other and also between the adjacent teeth. I decided to use the inclusive tapered implants in this case for tooth number seven and number eight. And then across the facial surfaces, biological bone grafting was, was added uh, to give that bone and tissue as much volume as possible and try to once again preserve as much as possible. It's easier for me to preserve than to try to regenerate this kind of uh, volume in the end. During the implant placement and surgery, I was unable to get the primary stability I wanted as it was below 35 newton centimeters, which really was insufficient for me to immediately provisionalize these with two biotemp crowns on top of uh, temporary abutments. So I decided to take the healing abutments that were included in the TRS solution and place those. The biotemp provisional crowns were converted by using some ribbond bondable reinforcement material forming a resin bonded bridge to the backs of tooth number six and tooth number nine. The patient wore both of those uh, biotemps for about two months, returned to my office so we could check the osseo integration and also really to see how the tissue had healed and see if we had trained that tissue to be sculpted a little bit more apically and to try to preserve as much papilla form as possible. It was confirmed on that healing check day that the tissue was progressing very nicely. Both implant sites had established contours that would facilitate a highly aesthetic emergence profile. So at this point, with adequate implant stability, I decided that we could probably temporize the patient. So the patient's uh, biotemp ribbond provisional was removed and the decision to do the provisional restorations on top of the custom abutments were planned. Uh, the two temporary abutments were included in the TRS system and they're patient specific and we can carry forward the amount of time and effort we've done in training the tissue by using the same sort of pattern in the custom healing abutments. The biotemp restorations were then placed and then we can further train the gingiva. The biotemps also were also kept out of occlusion. After wearing the biotemps provisionals over the top of the temporary abutments for about four weeks, brought the patient back in and asked him how he was doing. He said he was doing absolutely fine with that and he was extremely pleased with the restorative design. And we said, well, now is a point that we could finally move forward with some final impressions. The custom temporary abutments and the biotemp provisional crowns are removed. And along with the TRS solution, once again, we have the custom impression copings. It's important to note that the custom impression copings have the same gingival design as the rest of the parts and pieces that we're using. So we can communicate to the lab all of the hard work we've done in training the tissue. We don't have to worry about tissue collapsing as we're taking parts and pieces off. And did we get that communicated into the uh, final polyvinyl impression that we were going to be taking? A periapical radiograph was taken to confirm that the complete seating of the impression copings had occurred. It was verified and I was pleased with that. So then the final impression was made and then sent off to the lab for the fabrication of the definitive restorations and also to communicate to them once again the precise shape of the sulcus that we had created. 
The lab pours the master cast and the soft tissue model from the final impression. And with the patient specific contours, we could really see that very precisely because we used the custom impression coping to help replicate that for the lab to see what we had done with our patient. From that master cast, a scan is taken and a digital model is created. So then we can design the final custom abutments for the Bruxer solid zirconia crowns. The CAD CAM software is also used to create the custom abutment contours to support the exact sulca shape. The crowns themselves were digitally created over the virtual designs of the custom abutments and with slight adjustments made to each of them in order to optimize the crown to abutment interface. After finalizing the crown contours, the restorative designs were digitally prepared for fabrication and milled. The final custom abutments were fabricated from zirconia to a titanium base to maximize the strength of the abutment implant connection. The zirconia construction of the abutments would avoid any of the metallic undertones showing through the crown. A Bruxer crown was chosen for the final restoration because of its lifelike color and long-term durability and also to match the contralateral bridge spanning from teeth numbers 9 through 11. After those crowns were milled, the final restorations were seated back on the master model to double check the fit, occlusion, and the aesthetics. Once I had the crowns in hand from the laboratory, I called the patient back in so the final restorations could be delivered. What I really like is the custom abutments come with the acrylic delivery jig that makes my life so much easier by allowing me to place the abutments in the precise position and make sure they're indexed correctly. They were seated and torqued to 25 newton centimeters. The margins of the custom abutments also provide optimal support for the final soft tissue contours. Once verified with a radiograph that the custom abutments were seated properly, the Bruxer crowns are delivered over the top of the custom abutment and achieve the fit and optimal aesthetics that I felt like I could achieve for the patient on the upper uh, anterior region. Final radiograph confirms the ample bone volume surrounding the implants and we can see when we ask the patient what does he think about the final outcome it's without a doubt that he loves the way that his smile is now and he remarked that he loved that the way that the uh, bio temps were, were reproduced into the final crowns. So in conclusion, I think a restoratively driven treatment plan and the utilization of CAD CAM produced implant components can offer general practitioners a straightforward means of achieving an aesthetic result in the anterior regions. For general practitioners new to anterior implant cases, the inclusive TRS or tooth replacement system is a huge advantage and provides the option of getting all the parts and pieces to help you train the soft tissue from every phase of treatment. This all-inclusive packaging gives you the components and establishes both the predictability in the cost and the final treatment that you can offer your patients. I hope you guys have found something of worth in this presentation. Thank you once again.